Morning YouTubers. Got a quick video today since I didn't shoot arc footage back in the day for flux core and I haven't really done a whole lot of cutting etches on flux core as a matter of fact I don't know that I've done any on this channel and honestly I know the theory of what the penetration should be like on flux core but I've I don't know maybe I've never done a cut and etch on it here in the home shop no idea but that's going to be today's video. We're going to be welding quarter inch plate. I'm going to do four fillet welds, slightly tweak the settings. I'm going to do like an oscillation as well as straight in. We'll just vary a few things and we're just going to cut it, etch it and see what the hell is inside because hey, trust but verify, right? All right, let's get into it. So what I got here is quarter inch thick steel or 6.35 millimeter. We're going to be running 035 flux core wire out of my basically ESOB EM210, which is also a firepower FP200, same welder, it doesn't matter. But, you know, standard 200 amp class MIG flux core wire welder. Now, I cleaned all the material to pretty much bright, shiny metal. Looks like I missed a little bit there. I don't think it's gonna matter. This time I did grind the tops of this uh, and the bottom of this plate flatter, so hopefully the penetration looks a little bit cleaner than in some of my previous videos. And I notched every one of these so that I know which one is which. So when I tweak the settings a little bit, we'll know. But this isn't really a how to dial in the weld this thick. It's more or less just to see what the penetration looks like. And I'm going to put this out there right now. So flux core wire is well known to have uh, very serious penetration. Even gasless flux core on thicker plate like this quarter shouldn't be any problem to safely weld. And that's one of the great benefits to gasless flux core is that the short arc MIG process on quarter inch will not penetrate anywhere near as much as gasless will. And when you start talking 3 8 plate, good luck with short arc MIG. It's going to be pretty tough until you go to like spray arc to, to really bite into something that thick. Well, gasless flux core, generally speaking, up to, uh, you know, quarter inch to three eighths is going to be pretty acceptable penetration but the question is well how acceptable well that's the point of doing testing like this and i'm just going to run four passes tweak it and i'll shoot arc footage for the whole thing i'll be honest i have no idea how well it's going to turn out because i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time to make sure it looks good just because there's going to be a lot of fume and smoke on this and you know that isn't really this isn't a how to weld this is more like what happens type video so let's uh, get the shield on the lens and go from there.
So I thought I would just do an overview to show what we got before we cut and etch it. Now this first part of the weld, I'll take full responsibility for that. The camera was positioned right here and I started to weld and realized, my God, I couldn't see anything. So how can you weld something accurately without seeing it? Now I did tie in the both plates, but it's more or less more up here. Once I was away from the camera, I was able to settle down, float in real nice. That was the first pass. And when I do the breakdown of the cut etch, I'll give all the values and everything I welded that. This is a second pass, slightly higher values. Looks pretty decent. The third pass is right here. Did a little bit of an oscillation plus a little bit higher values. That's looking pretty decent as well. And then the highest values for any of them was this fourth pass. That also is looking pretty good and that's close to uh, an appropriate size weld for quarter inch plate. I don't see any porosity at the end. So in my previous video, I dialed that out by adjusting my burn back. I seem to, the burn back setting that was factory defaulted seemed to be creating porosity at the end. This right here isn't actually from the weld, that's from the tack that I had there. But yeah, it's looking real clean, no evidence of any porosity. This 035 Fab Shield by uh, Hobart seems to be running real clean. I mean, you look at virtually no spatter anywhere, and all I did is hit this with a wire wheel on a grinder. I mean, even like feeling this, I'm not exaggerating. There's nothing on there. I mean, just like you could literally wipe whatever's on here off with a Brillo pad. So I'm pretty impressed with that Fab Shield 21B. Like that's probably the least amount of spatter I've ever seen on quarter inch for just straight flux core gasless. All right, let's cut this bastard open and see what's in there. So the pass on the right, which were, was run at a little bit cold of values for quarter inch plate, you can see it has penetration both on the upright plate, the lower plate, and then down in the root, there's a little pin dot, but that's just because the plate wasn't milled completely flat. But overall, I don't really like the look of that too much. It's still not, you know, the worst I've seen, and it still is plenty strong. But when you compare it to pass number two, where a simple increase in wire feed by 20 inches per minute and the same voltage really pushed the penetration in there, everything about that looks better. This is probably one of the best examples I've ever seen that I've taken that shows how a simple, small, little change in values can add up to so much more in an actual weld. And it's why it's really important if you're doing a bunch of welding, hey, take some scrap of the same thickness, run a couple passes, cut it and etch it with some navel jelly just to see where you're at. Because had I not done this, honestly, the 240 and 260 inch per minute welds looked very similar on face value. Like there wasn't from an external standpoint, a huge difference between the two to where one I would say, oh man, that has so much more penetration than the other, really didn't. So, you know, this is a good teachable moment here. But like I said, I mean, past one, the penetration is beyond the plate on the top, the bottom, and the root by a little bit. So it's not like a super weak weld or anything, but obviously we want number two over number one. So let's move on to the other side. So now we're getting into more appropriate weld sizes for what we're welding on here, quarter inch. Pass three, where I bumped up the voltage from, uh, I believe it was 18.6 to 19.5. We can see the overall profile looks, I guess, like a 7018 run hot. I mean, no question that there's penetration in everything there and the roots fully fused, really good looking weld there. And that's what the minimum of what I would expect. I mean, that's about perfect. Now, the actual size of it is a little bit on the smaller side for a quarter inch plate. Now, weld number four, I ran a pinch more voltage and a pinch more wire feed, or actually a little bit more than a pinch more wire feed. And we can see the penetration of it is a little bit deeper just in the root, not so much in everything else. 
but the bead is taller and wider off of the top plate because, well, we added more wire to it. So this is very close to an acceptable weld size for quarter inch plate. Now I ran a set of fillet weld gauges on this and the top leg hit a quarter inch, the bottom leg Nah, it's close, but not quite there. I think uh, around 300 wire feed speed and 20.5 volt on my particular machine would have single pass welded this quarter inch thick steel with an appropriate size weld with good penetration. So definitely capable of welding quarter inch thick plate with no problems. This is roughly equal at pass four. Say, like I said, if I bumped the settings up a little bit, Roughly equal to 532 7018 and probably a little bit better penetration in the root than it. So not bad at all. So in conclusion, well, what did we learn? We learned that flux core wire gasless self-shielded has a ton of uh, penetration potential and can easily weld quarter inch thick plate. Now the machine I'm running on is a 200 amp class MIG welder or wire welder you may only have a 140 amp wire welder. Well, the good news is the values that I was running on this should be capable of being run on 120 volt wall outlet power. So if you have a 140 amp MIG welder, you probably could run the values that I had with 035 wire. It might be pushing it a little bit, honestly, with your machine. You may have a little bit better results with 030 on 120 volt, but Long story short, you know, a 140 amp MIG welder should be capable of running these values. And that means that you can safely weld quarter inch thick plate with a single pass and produce um, a very solid, strong weld, which is awesome. And that's something that with a 140 amp MIG welder, I would say that you probably couldn't do with gas shielded MIG wire on quarter inch plate on 140 amps. And that's because the MIG process, short arc, has less penetration than flux core. But with that said, I mean, I really like the way that these welds look. I'll show you the last pass right here, actually. Yeah, this guy. Pretty flat, looking good. I mean, it has a little bit of a crown on it, which is okay. That You kind of want that versus you can see the first side definitely more humped up. But like visually, these two don't look that much different. If you look at that versus this, I mean, a little bit rounder profile and they're quite a bit different in difference in penetration. So, you know, you can't go by what you see out here. You got to cut it open and look at it. But yeah, um, I kind of feel bad for some people because they, they, look at gasless flux core as kind of like a joke process and they think you know oh nobody does that it's trash but the reality is is that you know the welds it can produce i mean virtually no spatter with decent wire very good penetration very strong welds the tensile strength of this weld actually exceeds mig wire with er70 so very strong wire welds yeah, I mean, if you haven't considered flux core for some processes, especially on thicker metal, that's really to me where flux core holds its own. When you start talking quarter inch thick and above metal, you should be thinking either gasless or dual shield flux core wire for your needs for welding that. And then below that, sure, short arc MIG is great, especially on sheet metal. But don't sell this, you know, this flux core wire short. It'll take care of some pretty serious jobs. I mean, they do use forms of it for welding bridges and stuff. I mean, it's kind of replaced 7018 in a lot of respects simply because you can do so much more deposition with less fatigue. And honestly, I mean, I'm not exaggerating. If you can stick weld halfway decent, flux core is infinitely easier. Like when you weld uphill, I could almost do that in my sleep in comparison to, you know, stick uphill, it's so much easier and welding in tight spots, you know, you don't have to worry about sticking a rod or anything. So I'm a huge fan of flux core for like jobs outside or in the barn or on a farm, something like that. Like it's very versatile. The only downside to it, and I mentioned this in some of my previous videos, 
is you can get pin dots of porosity in it even though everything else looks good. And to kind of prove that point, it's going to be a little difficult for you to see it. I'm going to see, oh, there we can see it. I'll point to it. That's a little pin dot of porosity inside of that weld. And that was pass number three, it looks like. Little pin dot, and you're going to have that from time to time, even though everything ran good, it still has that in there. Is that a strength, you know, issue? I mean, let's face it, on this thick of material, that little pin dot in there, that's not going to weaken it by any margin that really matters. And that's kind of the purpose of why dual shield exists. When you run dual shield, uh, weld defects like that are far less common. And on this side where I cleaned it up, there's no evidence of any porosity in it. So that's just kind of the nature of it. I mean, you'd be shocked too with MIG on aluminum it has the same issue where you just have random bits of porosity you know, not really a huge issue, but it's there. It's just something to be aware of. But yeah, with that said, thanks for sticking around for the video. Hopefully you guys learned something and will become more confident with Flux Core in the future and, you know, understand its limitations and what it's good at. So anyways, thanks. Till next time.